tin can gin picks fresh bluegrass beets. For artist Karen Savage, a palette knife does the trick. I like that I cannot get the amount of detail that I could with a, a paintbrush. Perseverance pays off for Hibbing Sarah Pionin. I wanted to quit music my entire childhood. And finally, when I was somewhere between 12 and 14, my mom said, OK, you can quit. And I said, Mom, you're crazy. Music is my life. Meet these artists and more on this edition of The Playlist. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Well, tonight we have the pleasure of introducing an upbeat bluegrass band that'll blow your doors off. Please welcome Tin Can Gin to the playlist. <laughs> She drifted up to Minnesota, jumping on the tracks, trying to see the world, nothing's holding back. Smile to everyone she meets with a banjo on her knee. Watch her go as she flees. Oh, Caroline, why must she run? She says it's just for fun. They go down to New Orleans, trying to chase the sun. Stuck in Nashville and have a little fun. Dancing when the music plays, she wishes she could stay. Watch her go her own way. Oh, Caroline, why must she run? She says it's just for fun. Say goodbye to loved ones, say goodbye to the past. I miss you, my Caroline, you run so fast. If you see my Caroline, would you send her my way? I hope to see her someday. Oh, Caroline, why must you run? She said. The rules are, whatever I'm going to paint on that particular day, it has to be an image that I myself have seen. So I'm the one who takes the photo. I'm the person who's there. And that's the one I'll paint within that, a 24-hour time frame. I like this one because the dark is creating an S. It's also fun just to push this paint around, like liquid color. I needed to try new things, and um, the tools that I decided I would start to use I hadn't used before were the palette knives.
so I would say I averaged about four hours a day per painting, which is like a half-time job, which is okay. <laughs> it's okay for a year of my life. I'm Karen Savage Blue. I'm a landscape artist in the awesome state of northern Minnesota. I like that I cannot get the amount of detail that I could with a, a paintbrush. It's just not allowed, so I have to utilize other elements to get the effect that I want. You can feel that wind blowing past you, and it's, uh, it's in the sky and it's in the clouds, and the wind is and force that passes through and the palette knife is a force that passes through. I think my culture is translated into my art, I guess as a way of appreciating nature, living with nature, um, getting what you need from nature. I think that's more reflective in my art than other aspects. I think it's a shape, it's the light, it's the mood of the place, or a place that is only gonna be there for a small amount of time. You know the flower is only gonna be there for maybe two weeks and then it's going to change to something else. I like to capture the moments while they're there. I like it to be identifiable, but then again, I think that the viewer, I think they need to do a little work also. To me, that's engaging. That's engaging the viewer. That way, they're putting a little bit of themselves into the painting also. I don't know how much more a person can paint than what I'm painting right now. So I'm, I maxed out on the, on the opportunity. And uh, I feel that it is starting to pay off starting to pay off. I'm feeling much more confident as an oil painter and uh, I'm getting a lot of good pieces of art. Well, tonight, musician and composer Sarah Pionin is here to fill us in on her musical journey. Welcome to the playlist, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Tell me where you're from and who influenced you to be involved in music. I was born in Virginia, Minnesota, but raised in Hibbing. And I uh, grew up playing uh, violin in a children's performance group called The Singing Strings. And the leader was Helena Pakula, who was an immigrant from Finland herself and I have quite a bit of Finnish ancestry, so we jived in that way. But to see it as a career choice, who said, you know what, you can do this, you can follow this? You know, Karen, I, that never really occurred to me. It just sort of happened. There's a funny story, my mom, I wanted to quit music my entire childhood, and I was very poorly behaved and very angry, and I didn't want to practice, and finally when I was somewhere between 12 and 14, my mom said, okay, you can quit. And I said, mom, you're crazy, music is my life. So, you know, I just like to fight. Now you are traveling in this specific instance with a group of uh, really talented emerging artists from Minnesota. Uh, tell me about this experience and what are you getting out of it? This is uh, a tour sponsored by the Cedar Cultural Center. And none of us knew each other or had played together before. Thank you. 
we all play very different genres of music and have very different musical backgrounds, musical training. So it is really, really teaching me a lot about listening to other people and being open and being part of a clan or a group and creating something collectively. Man, I'm, I feel like I'm growing a lot and experiencing growing pains. Which is part of the process. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And so how did you discover that music is your thing? It's the medium that I have the best control over and I'm able to express myself through and work with. But I feel like there are multiple other media that I could have used. I mean, I love words. It's just not my training. Sound is very, very powerful. And I'm very thankful to have played an instrument like the violin all of my life, even though sometimes it's been really frustrating. I want like a piano where I can do everything and accompany myself, and it's much more difficult on the violin. But the violin is the instrument that most closely mimics the human voice I've heard. So if, if I can work with it more, it can become this extension of my own voice, and then I don't feel like there's a separation, you know, just be, and I'm getting there little by little. I think it's a lifelong process. And that's the beauty of it. You know, if you come fully formed, there's nowhere to go with it. Right. <clears throat> but it would just be so much easier. <laughs> Do you have any recordings out there that we can look for? Yeah, I've made four recordings. Uh, they're all surrounding kind of Finnish music. I have uh, two that I made with a Finnish-American uh, musician from Ishpeming, Michigan. And then I had one I made of uh, Finnish tango music. And then my newest one is a collaboration with a Finnish accordion player who lives in Helsinki. And so we bop back and forth and tour and record. And that's called All Otar, which means Maiden of the Waves. Last question, do you have any advice for young musicians as they consider, you know, do I really want to commit to this lesson thing that I'm supposed to be playing my instrument? Well, my mother just gave me some very good advice, which she had probably given me before, which I never listened to. Um, and that music really can become your haven. It's the place where you go and something that no one can take away from you. It's your place of peace, it's your meditation, it's your friend, it's your anything. So if you can find a way in music that it speaks to you that way, I think that is the best gift you can really have. We have two more for you here. Anticipating, my mind is still investigating what this life will bring. Beating and dislocating, secure of relocating where your heart knows it is right. Falling from the highest tree, you lose your breath and then you believe. Writing words along the wall, I'm hoping you can read them all. I'll catch you when. Anticipating, my thoughts are suffocating. When will this word soon see light? Wasting and communicating, my thoughts are accumulating. Nowhere in the truth in your smile. Falling from the highest tree, you lose your breath and then you
Well, Harrison Olk, you got to uh, be the speaker for Tin Can Gin. Welcome to the playlist. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So tell me the, the beginnings, the origin story of Tin Can Gin. <clears throat> um, you know, uh, Trevor, uh, the guitar player, and I, we grew up in White Bear Lake together. And we met and we played a lot of music back in high school together. And I moved off to school in Duluth and kind of went our separate ways. And I started playing the banjo a lot more in college and invited him up and, and told him about the exciting music scene up here. And so he made the move and we've met uh, Brian up here as well. Um, during that time, we've had an opportunity to play kind of all over um, northern Wisconsin and the Midwest. And we've, we've met a lot of really cool people along the way, like Nori and Neil, that have really been willing to share their talents with us too. So that's kind of pieced us all together. How did that music, how does bluegrass music bring you together? You know what, that, uh, that is what bluegrass music is. Um, I've, uh, I've spent a lot of my um, childhood listening to bluegrass music and traveling to festivals with my family. And if there's one thing that bluegrass music does is it brings people together. I am um, very comfortable jumping into a jam circle with a bunch of people because that's what I grew up doing. And you know, that's what bluegrass musicians do. And then that's exactly how we met Nori and, and Neil on the bass. I mean, just kind of getting together with them and saying, hey, here's what we got, let's jam, you know, and, and just kind of figure out different parts and it, it works out. Tell me how your songwriting comes together. What inspires you? How does that work for your band? Um, you know, there's a variety of inspirations, I think. We all kind of, I think, shut off into our own little world and come together and share our ideas and tweak it, you know, with, with different ideas. And that's, so it's kind of, we do it on our own a little bit. We come together and mutually kind of finish the product. Okay, here's the tough question. Um, I was gonna ask you what you sing in the shower, uh -oh. but that might be too personal. So what song best describes you as a musician? Oh, <clears throat> Rocky Top. <laughs> I'm a bluegrasser at heart. I, I, uh, I love it. it name a, a traditional bluegrass song and I think that would, that would pretty much cover me. <laughs> uh, where does the name come from? Tin Can Gin. Uh, we're all servers and we've all ran gin and tonics like time in and time out. And it just kind of came, it clicked one day. We we're like, tin can gin, huh, all right. And we all happen to like gin, so it kind of works out. <laughs> and into your lyrics, yeah, which is all right. Yeah, exactly. And what's next for tin can gin? Um, we're hitting the studio, and uh, we've got um, quite a few songs lined up. So we're going to go to Sacred Heart um, here in Duluth with uh, Tom Fabjans, and we're going we're gonna to do another album. So we're, we're very excited. Okay, and where can people get this one? This is the one that's out now, That's right? the one that's out, yeah. Go to tincangin.com. You can find it there. Link on um, our Facebook. Otherwise, uh, Electric Fetus has it in town here. So. Yeah. All right. We'll look for the new one. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thanks. So this last song we're going to play, uh, we wrote this song about this city here. Seems to be a common theme amongst musicians in Duluth. Sitting in the city up on the hill Where the wind, it blows so free Don't think I'll leave if I have it my way It's a nice place
Come on, take it in. 